Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com, where I do what I think is fun. And this week, I'm going to just tear apart this old uh, desktop printing calculator. Um, it actually works. I picked it up at uh, Goodwill for, uh, well, it says $6, but it was half price Saturday, so I got it for $3. Um, it is a uh, Swin Tech, I guess you would call it. 401DP. Uh, you can actually still buy these types of calculators. Um, they're they're not expensive. Um, in fact, this exact same model uh, can still be bought in version three, which has some upgraded features. I guess um, probably doesn't have the same mechanical level as this one. This is a an older vintage one. It's uh, I would say vintage 90s, early 90s, um, based on 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 what I found on the internet about it. Interestingly enough, I can actually still get the manual for this thing, uh, but the company, the same company, Swintech, wants to swindle you and make you pay for the manual, which is just ridiculous. Um, it's more of a financial thing, but um, but it'll be fine for on the bench, and it's got kind of a vintage look to it, and I kind of like that. Crack this thing apart, and uh, and see what's inside and how it works. I want to actually cover how it actually functions inside and uh, some chip technologies. You can still buy the ribbon spools for this. For the cleanup, if I peel this back, you can see how clean it used to be. So we'll see if we can, can't get it that clean. Um, if we can't, we, uh, if we can't get it as clean as what's under that sticker um, using some standard household kitchen cleaners and stuff um, on this case and I'll see if I can't get a hold of that uh, Retro bright, I think is what it's called, and uh, see if that'll clean up this plastics. Okay, and for taking these apart, you want to pull these uh, little, their little caps. If you want to take your paper off, um, and this pulls off four deep screws. And you got to really push to get that clip to pop. It has to feed forward because there's clips in the front here, and you got to sort of lift and then sort of squirm it forward there and then it just sort of moves forward just a nudge For the most part it's it's pretty dirty there's lots of you know I suppose I should zoom in on this stuff so you can see what I'm actually going to show you so there's lots of uh, this under the keys so yeah I can blow a lot of it out but some of it I have to pull out I don't know how it's gotten in there um, there's these little protective um, uh, covers that keep basically keep dust and dirt from getting inside these sliders getting down in there and this one has one too um, it's a little harder to see because it's like a solid plastic there it is there's another little there's a few of these lurking around <laughs> there's a, some sort of a moth um, but other than that it's pretty clean they've got the transformer here this is where the ribbon goes this is your numerical digits that uh, get selected and then and then print. When this roller comes forward, it prints the numbers. It presses the ink ribbon against the paper, pinches it between that and these selected digits here. This is your vacuum fluorescent uh, display. It's really bright. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get a real good close up of that. Well, how that uh, grid looks inside there. And you can see the data pins sort of coming up across the bottom down there. They're really long legs. <laughs> it sits up on this plastic display. Well, you can kind of see um, the actual data lines in there. The numbers will have a fluorescent material that when electricity passes you know, between the grid and that vacuum, it'll make those white spots fluoresce, making them really bright. And you can actually kind of see the traces where they go to the back and the front. And there's like a grid, like a mesh screen in the front, which will energize the front. Hence, draw the electrons through and you know, the gas essentially becomes a little gas in there that gets charged and causes the fluorescent material to fluoresce just like a, just like a television, actually. And on the end here, you say, you see a black spot like that. And you see that in vacuum tubes all the time. And you think, wow, that's burnt, that looks bad. Well, no, it's not. That's a deposit of a certain um, kind of a powdery chemical, a dab of goo, if you will, that they put in there so that when they suck, when they suck the last bit of gas out through this and seal this off, 
if there's any gas left in here ever, or if there's even a tiny leakage through that through something, this material will soak up that gas, that tiny whiff of gas. And if you ever crack one of these open, you'll notice this changes color because, of course, you saturate it with the gases and it totally it totally changes color. But the, that way, you know, these can last a long time even with a small leak. Oh, well, I don't know how long they last with a small leak, but that soaks up that last bit of gas that's in there that can't be pumped out. Um, not much more to that. This is the essentially the keyboard. It, it just has a ribbon on there. I can't really get inside the keyboard because if you look, there's heat stakes. Heat stakes are when you have little bits of plastic that are they normally look about like uh, they look a lot like those. But then they get pressed and melted, and then they look like these. And then that's. Uh, that means you have to grind out these heat stakes to take that board off. And there are some screws on the corners, but really the heat stakes are accounting for most of this securing this board to the keyboard structure. So I really can't. I can clean around it real good, but I can't really take it off. And it's soldered to this main board down here, so I can't even. I don't all I can do is kind of prop it up like that. That's the main chip in there. What if I can? Get a good zoom in there for you. There you go. This is the, the main, actually, microcomputer. It's a four. It's actually an eight-bit microcomputer, and it uh, actually has everything built in. Um, uh, well, it's a computer, so it, it just takes the key inputs from the keyboard through this ribbon, does its you know calculations. It has like 67 built-in instructions, and it also has what's called a FID, which is uh, a fluorescent display controller that NEC makes. Um, this particular chip number, if you didn't get it, is made by NEC. It's D7528AC. It has a date code of 1992, uh, 26th week. So this this chip is 92. Um, I found another chip back there that's uh, also 92, so this board was definitely constructed in 92. So this is a 20-year-old calculator. You see those chips back there? There's three of those chips back there. Okay, there you're pretty good focus. Um, in the back, those three um, components that I showed you back there are uh, just a NPN Darlington um, um, transistors in an array, in chip array. So there's three of them those chip arrays and there's seven Darlington NPN uh, transistors in there and what their job is what those uh, those array those uh, uh, array transistors in those chips are for is to control uh, the power going out through this green ribbon back here um, and if you kind of follow the green ribbon from the back side of the display here that green ribbon goes down and underneath this mechanism here and then pops out behind um, this roller here with all the numbers and behind that are little tiny um, solenoids that control which one of these numbers gets selected so there's a line essentially for selecting the different numbers and as this thing spins um, those uh, Darlington arrays control which of these little hooks, hooks get set and controls where these numbers stop I've seen these on eBay and I've seen these in other sales going still for $100 or more. Um, though I think they're a bit ridiculous um, asking that much. Uh, you can get equivalent functioning calculators um, in the $50 range brand new. There's the transformer that's going to supply a couple. It's got a primary of course with the with the high volt with the AC mains coming in and then it's going to have two secondaries. Um, and there are going to be two different voltages. One voltage is going to be for controlling the chips and the other voltage is going to be for this vacuum fluorescent. There's also a fuse in here. That is an NPN power transistor. It basically just, it's essentially just cutting the power on um, as far as I can tell. But I would have to get to the back side of that board to find out for sure. You would think that these would be motor driven for turning the uh, ribbon, but they're not. It's actually all mechanical. The only motor on here is this single motor back here. Um, that turns this gear right here. Now, that turns all the other cogs and gears in here and does all the other selection of, of what's going on here. You can turn it by hand and you can you can see it kind of turns everything. 
and it's, it's sort of cam driven on the other side over here so once it gets to a certain point then it kind of gets tight because now it wants to bring this roller forward and stamp the numbers that are selected and then come back and like I said those Darlington Array transistors control little pins it's going to be hard to get this on film down in here there's pins that actually lock on to these guys and what they do is they essentially jam a little jam a needle up in here and it stops one of these from turning and based on which one of those needles come up it stops these gears from turning um, for the numbers to be stopped and then hence selected okay so now we're we're back to showing this reversing gear working so essentially it's it'll click along and then it, once the ribbons all full on one side it'll push this over and that engages another little uh, hinge in the bottom and then once it is completely drawn up all the ribbon on this one side it will sort of pull it up a little bit and then that flipped over and now it's reversed the other way now it will start reeling up over here as it mechanically is you know, sliding in and out um, and doing its printing when its print jobs come by it will do it so it's like going along and you see it clicking and then it's going to push it and it's pushing that cog forward and that runs the numbers stamps grab some more ink grab some more um, ribbon and I really like the ribbon because unlike the cartridges they don't run out right away they go back and forth and back and forth and when they start getting kind of faded then you just replace them or re-ink them but they're so cheap now you can just replace them and and if they ever quit if they ever quit making these you can always just re-ink these although the, the two color ones would be a bit tough to re-ink compared to the straight black but they'll be making these for decades so no sweat there okay so you can see I I got the printing mechanism out. It wasn't so hard. A couple of screws. And it makes, it makes it easier to see these uh, these uh, transistor arrays here that uh, actually will control uh, which of these get selected. And now I want to get um, to the back side of this. Here's that motor. Yeah, let's see. This is, uh, this is a couple of blue wires are for this solenoid here that moves that little plastic thing up and down. It's amazing how all this runs on just one little motor with springs and cogs and gears. Um, there is an optical sensor. Um, it, essentially it's a counter switch right there. There's a couple little wires going up there. Um, and they go to this optical sensor. It senses that wheel turning. It senses those, those uh, slots going past that optical sensor right there. That's what it knows, but essentially it knows it knows where it can index. It has a, you know, an index. It has a, a blank spot right there on that wheel, and then a big fat hole, and so it'll know quite quickly where it's at in its rotation. You can kind of see these pins here. See if I can show one right there. I can push on one. I think. See, it pulls it, latches it, pulls back, and unhooks. I don't want to take this plastic off because it'll go twing and it'll be just a mess. But you can see that right here, the ribbon goes back into here and it's going to control uh, little solenoids in here, if you will, little pull down magnets or something that will that will pull on these. Boy, that's tough to see. There you go. You can see all those springs and each one of those is a little pin that moves up and down and grabs those wheels and selects the number holds it in place while the whole wheel spins and then just the ones that are held in place will stay put when this spins and then I can do it with my fingers you know so you'd be like the pins are, my fi are the fingers and then it hits the number and it wants to zero them all back out again make them all zero see that's why you'll hear it going around a lot because it has to go around and select the one you want to print your number once it prints then it has to go around again to zero it all out get to the blank blank spot here. Okay I got some cleaning done um, I actually went through this pretty well I used uh, I used some uh, isopropyl alcohol 99.95% um, um, to basically clean 
um, inside of here. I used a toothbrush to clean. There's lots of uh, gook and some grease built up on these uh, rollers with the numbers. And so I used that. I kind of held it upside down and used a toothbrush and I brushed it as I rolled it. And I got all that gook off of the rollers. Um, and then I cleaned up um, with just uh, a little bit more in and around um, just the surface gook. Um, left the grease on all of these uh, on all these cogs and, and uh, I did clean up this uh, tray for the ribbon but I have uh, uh, <coughs> reapplied lithium this is white lithium um, grease uh, WL-9 uh, uh, Permatex get yeah, I like an auto store it's a nice clean white grease and I just used uh, this to get back get the get that lubrication back on these wear points um, for this tray because it has lots of moving bits. I then used the isopropyl alcohol essentially to clean the keys. I just held it upside down at the sink and just kept using a toothbrush and cleaned in and around all the keys and let the isopropyl alcohol drip off upside down um, and then I just let it lay there and dry um, and then I cleaned it uh, one more time with just some some Windex or glass cleaner just to get any residue that was still left and then I cleaned this glass I also cleaned uh, cleaned this up with some glass cleaner this is the display cover we wanted to get it down to this color where that sticker was because this is the original color um, in fact it's even kind of okay on this side it must have been up against something for years because it's 20 years old sitting in some dirty office I suppose and I uh, I used this uh, Clorox cleanup with bleach, and it didn't really touch it at all. I mean, it got the grease off, but it didn't touch that yellowing. I even soaked it and sprayed it like five times during the night, and just thinking maybe it would just kind of the bleach would just sort of suck out the color, but it didn't work. And I'm going to try a few more possibilities. Um, or if that doesn't work, I'll just see if that retro bright actually will work. I've heard good things about it. Okay, it's all back together. Um, that's as clean as I could get it. Um, not too bad. You can still see there's a contrast difference where that sticker was. I did some tests on the back. Um, not that they'll show up much, but I uh, I did some acetone here, and it, it sure did clear off that yellowing, but it also kind of melted it and kind of it just made it tough. I had to actually use sandpaper to smooth it back out. I did some more straight on bleach here, soaked it for a while, but that didn't touch it. Over here I did some uh, brake cleaner, nothing happened. I did uh, goof off, which actually melted it just like the acetone, so there must be an acetone-like component in goof off. And, uh, and I had to sand it again because it just melted the plastic right away. So, anyway, that's about all the experimenting I was going to do with it anyway. Um, but it's, uh, it's clean enough, it's going to get dirty sitting in the garage anyway. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it looks real good. I do it clear and fill a bunch of eights and nines and whatever and take that and just add, I don't know, add a thousand to it. And uh, the print's up there just fine. And get, I can even do like a a bunch of that in a negative and it's gonna print in red and then I can say total it up and I guess I could. It, it does real good it starts off and says you did a clear and then the number plus a thousand add and then I did a negative on that and then it said you had three um, numbers you entered in the total which is what this means is this so you know that's that's spot on what it's supposed to do well, there, another piece of equipment uh, saved from the landfill. Um, it's got a new lease on life, might be 20 years old. Um, found itself basically almost as trash at Goodwill. Now it's all cleaned up and ready for another 20 years. I'll be able to just reach over if I need to do a quick calculation. I won't even have to turn it on because it'll come on when the lights come on. Well, I might leave it off most of the time. We'll see. And I'll just reach over, flip it on, and uh, can do a quick calculation. Um, normally I would get down my HP you know, a handy HP, but uh, really just something of just adding some simple numbers and I just uh, 
you know, I'd just rather have something that's just right there, got a big display, and be easier to use. Okay, thanks for joining. Um, thumbs up if you like it, and see you next time.